design things and think in a way that you couldn't really do before. You don't really have to worry too much about how you're going to get it out of the mold or how you're going to machine it or how am I going to get my cutter into this particular area. Um, you can design in a much, uh, much more sort of open manner. And this has kind of spurned a whole lot of other associated technologies where software technology now has um, guys that traditionally did um, finite element analysis have now started saying, well, we can actually use our algorithms to decide how we're going to put material into a particular space. So there's some really, really cool and, and interesting software out there now where you tell it, this is my design space. These are the forces that I have to deal with. Um, this is where I'm going to attach to the other components. And it then calculates where it's going to put material to comply with all of that stuff. So the material actually grows into a space where it needs to be, and it only grows the material that it needs. So you end up with components that are dramatically lighter, um, and you can do all sorts of really cool um, organic shapes and components that look completely different to what we used to. My next couple of slides are South African examples of, of what's been happening in, and, and what's been happening and been touched by um, 3D printing and 3D printing technologies. So the jewelry sector is, is a fantastic story where local jewelers have been using 3D printing for almost 15 years now. And they are doing the most amazing designs and designs that you couldn't even conceive of previously. Um, and typically these sort of things, I mean, these guys get so good now that we've got one customer who goes home in the evening after he's been working in his factory and he spends like three or four hours in front of his computer and designs sometimes as many as five or ten rings. He then puts them onto his printer, and they print, when he wakes up in the morning, the rings are printed, printed in a material that he can burn out um, in his lost, uh, lost wax casting process. And then sometimes by that after, the following afternoon, he's actually got the precious metal component, and he's got the finished piece. Um, some of them are also taking it a step further where they actually design... In the CAD models, they design all the little clips and claws and things to hold the stones. They print the component, put those stones into the printed part, put that into the investment material, and then the metal flows around that, and you end up with the, the ring coming out of the investment material with its stones in place, and then, then polish and finish it off. So it's, it's just a, a fantastic example of, of um, the technology being used in an industry that's really embraced it. This is also a fun example. Again, a local company, a, a local uh, company that designs and manufactures um, Western saddles to export to the USA. He does really cool work, um, and we've we've been on a whole journey. Sort of, it's taken about six years or so to develop the process. We started out with a a hand-shaped saddle tree, which, of course, as you can imagine, was not symmetrical. Uh, wasn't quite what he wanted. So we, we scanned that and then started the process of actually developing that on the, on, in the computer software, ensuring that it was symmetrical. And now he has the benefit of being able to come along and say, well, actually, I need for a special customer, I need it to be slightly longer or slightly shorter. And you can do all of that digitally.